Well, welcome. Uh, we have another fantastic uh, day here at the uh, Noble Shire of Progressive Discussion. Uh, today, we welcome John Cook and Charlie Bramald. Um, John is the lead writer, and if you could call him uh, the captain of the Age of Distraction. He's a lead guitarist and a former uh, member of This Winter Machine and This Other Eden. And then his first mate, uh, although he is very capable, is the able vocalist Charlie Bramald from Ghost of the Machine and uh, Shadow of Mercury. So welcome, guys. Do you want to say hi? Good afternoon. How are we all doing? Hi, Professor Mark. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, yeah, definitely thank you for time. Uh, thank you both. That sometimes I get speeded up here. Thank you both for taking time out of your busy schedule to discuss your uh, latest album, A Game of Whistlers, with us. Um, this band is like a super group of modern UK progressive rock talent. Uh, you also have gravity defying bassist Mark Gatlin. Uh, hats off, uh, gentlemen, it's adequate. And he was also part of IT and multi-instrumentalist and uh, producer extraordinaire Dom Benison from Last Motion Picture, and he was also a part of this winter machine. Uh, he also plays drums and keyboards, and uh, please, at this point, go ahead and talk a little bit about how all of you got together to form Age of Distraction, and uh, go ahead. Do you want to kick that one off, John? I will indeed, I will indeed. Um, so I suppose kind of um, just to give a little bit of background, um, I mean, I've, I've been involved in music and, and playing music and playing guitar for, you know, a number of years, over 30 years. Um, but I'd kind of had a little bit of time away with um, having a career and a family and so on and so forth. Um, and then when, when I was asked to kind of deputise for This Winter Machine, um that was a, an opportunity that was probably too good to to turn down which which was uh which was great fun but you know i don't want to kind of dwell on that because that's its own story and we're here to talk about age of distraction but it, that kind of led me back into the the uh back into the music scene i guess and it ignited that kind of passion that i you know i've always had but i've kind of put it to one side while i could concentrate on on you know being being a, a husband and a, a father and a you know having a career and so on so I'd started at probably the beginning of 2023 um although I was still working with this winter machine I was um beginning to I, I'd had a lot of ideas that I'd kind of been working on in, in the preceding year um that was strictly just kind of myself uh you know noodling about at home um and it wasn't until the like I said the beginning of 2023 that um there was a couple of tracks that I'd spent probably a little bit more time on um and originally I was kind of just aiming to do more of a, an instrumental um project um to be fair probably just myself at home you know put down some midi keys and some programmed drums and and you know kind of go mad on the guitar um but Charlie had reached out at the beginning of 2023 just to kind of say hi and, you know, he'd seen a couple of videos of, of me with this winter machine and just Charlie's a nice guy, he's, he's, a, he's a nice guy, so he just wanted to kind of, you know, um, just just say, you know, send out a, a hello, really. And we, we just continued talking from there, probably two or three months in. Um, I had a track that... The more I kind of played it, the more I I worked on it, the more I realised it wasn't an instrumental. Um, and yeah, I kind of you know made the suggestion to Charlie and just said, would you be interested in you know potentially? Um, and he was very busy at the time. He was kind of getting ready to go out on tour with Zio. Uh, he had to obviously go to the Machine commitments uh, as well as Shadows on Mercury. So you know I wasn't ex expecting him to kind of you know, say, oh, yeah, I'll drop everything and, and kind of get on it, which was absolutely fine because I was only doing it in the background. But he, um, yeah, I sent him a, what, what ended up being comp compromised, which was just my original version of me at home, some program drums and, and guitars. Um, and, 
Yeah, it wasn't until Charlie kind of said I've, he had a, a rough recording that he'd done at home and he sent it across that when I kind of uh, loaded that up and, you know, listened back, I thought, hold on a minute, I think we might have a song here. Um, and it was at that point that I realised that kind of, I really liked what, what Charlie, I mean, I, I loved his vocals from Ghost of the Machine and I, I loved the Ghost of the Machine album and um, I knew obviously he was a talented fella. Um, but the way that he approached the song, you know, the uh, uh, compromise was probably totally different than I would. And that's what I loved about it because there was nothing that there was nothing familiar to me, but it, it was all, it, it made it a really exciting kind of uh, exchange of, of ideas. Um, so basically Charlie had, had sent that through and I, and I was almost kind of happy with that. Um, and it wasn't until I sent, the, the files over to Don Benison and I, I said, would you mind kind of just having a listen and maybe, you know, mixing it for us? And at that point, there was no intention to kind of carry it on any further or do live drums and, and all those type of things. It was it was strictly just still going to be almost like a, a home project. And, you know, Charlie had thrown some some vocals down and I was happy enough. But um, when we sent it across to Don, he kind of did what Don does best and, you know, stripped it back and then, you know, offered, he said, oh, I don't want to put some live drums down. I was like, well, yeah, why not? And the, the moment that that kind of happened was the moment we realised that we had something a little bit special and, and we needed to kind of give it the the time and uh, an and effort that it deserved. Um, so we we uh, dragged Charlie up, up to Leeds. We all went round, round to Dom's, uh, did the vocals on, on Compromised and, and that was it. The moment that we'd done it, the moment that he'd mixed it, we knew we knew that there was something. Um, we, we had something, um, and, and and that was it. Then it, it it kind of snowballed it in a positive way from there. We just you know I, I I got on with with writing and pretty much wrote the album musically anyway. Obviously the guys all had to put their touches to it, but um, sorry I just totally cut Mark out of it then, didn't I? Kind of <laughs> yeah. I was Just yeah. Forgot about the bass. Yeah. Um. So we'd we played a gig uh, at this winter machine, um, and Hats of Gentlemen had supported us earlier that year, and I really loved. Uh, that was the first, you know, my 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 first time hearing uh, Hats Off, and you know, I really liked what they did, but in, in particular, I really liked Mark's approach to the bass, and you know, we we kind of got talking after that, and in you know, I as much as I could put put down some rough bass ideas I, I, I mentioned it to him I said I've got this track that I'm working on with Charlie would you be interested and he you know he um he, he snapped it straight up he threw threw down a, a few ideas got those back to us and as I say when we we sent it all over to the uh, melting pot that is uh, Don Benison's studio <laughs> he he turned it Magic into something happens. yeah he did um and he turned it into what what you hear today and as I say, it kind of just it just went from there. We knew that all of those pieces connected, and and the music that we had, and the the excitement around it. You know, we we had to do something with it, and you know, um, we find ourselves here now. You know, almost a year. I mean, to be fair, you know, Charlie kind of had the right timeline. I wanted to accelerate the timeline at every you know foreseeable uh <laughs> or every you know uh attempt because i was too excited and i, I wanted to get the music out there and charlie was understandably you know, absolutely but you you were 100 percent right in, in how you said we should approach it and um you know i'm learning those lessons but we you know and a, one thing um you know there were a couple of delays along the way just you know logistics of getting us all together and you know a couple of illnesses and so on and so forth but you know we've, we've done everything right on the turn uh, of this year um and allowed it to kind of fully take its course and you know where it's all systems going out to to get the album out and um and, and let everybody hear it well uh when you i got it just coming on the uh, uh i zipped by it real fast but uh gravity defined bassist uh mark gatlin and <clears throat> since you left him out i gotta just mention um I, when I first read that, I was like, what are they talking about? So I watched, <laughs> some, I watched some YouTube 
I watched some YouTube videos of him, and I was like, okay, now I get it. The man is I don't know how wild. he built some of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you don't expect that from a bassist. You expect it from a lead guitarist, but he really – Absolutely. Yeah. He, was, he played yeah. with um, It at the first ever Ghost of the Machine show, and that, that that's where he really caught my eye. He, he was absolutely all over the stage, just – yeah. Such a, a force of nature performer, so exciting to watch, uh, and obviously the the bass parts that he writes are uh, equally exciting. Just absolutely fantastic. He really understood the uh, the assignment when it came to compromised, and then the rest of the album, uh, as, as it ended up being. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. All right, so you have got this super group together, and you mentioned in the. Um sort of the intro to to the band that you're trying to go back and lift um uk progressive rock back up to where it used to be you know one of the best in the uh in the progressive realm um and i know it, it, people don't like being compared and especially the word neo-progressive is uh sort of a bad word but i don't know how else to describe it but that 80s kind of sound uh you are not them you are not copying anyone in any way but i feel that kind of spirit in this album um am i wrong uh what are some of your favorite not just neo prog but just prog in general or rock in general what are some of your favorite bands what are some of your Better question. What are some of your influences for this band? Do you want me to go, Charlie? Yeah, well, I think because you wrote the music, I think a lot of your influences kind of steered it. But we'll, we'll, uh, so the vocal yeah. approach that I took probably comes from what I like listening to. And it's, it's, it's fused in a really interesting way. But let's start it's with uh, the bedrock, which was the songs that you wrote and your influences. Yeah, I mean, I, I've kind of, my my influences and I with the music that I kind of grew up listening to and had a, a massive passion passion for when I first started guitar was kind of the new wave of British heavy metal as they called it. So I was into all of those type of bands and you know I was certainly a mass, a really big Metallica and Megadeth fan and then got into bands like Slayer. Um, so kind of in my my te- my early teens especially that was. That's all I listened to, and then bands like Pantera, um, and then when I so I picked guitar up when I was kind of ten, and just tootled about with it for maybe eighteen months, um, and but once I started to kind of you know to get a few things under my fingers, then it started to develop my ear for um, for guitar playing in particular. So obviously, don't get me wrong, the you know players in in bands like Pantera and and Slayer and Metallica and Certainly Megadeth has, has had some of the best players out there. Um, but it kind of, I, it, learning that type of thing and then kind of really wanting to kind of um, pursue that slightly more technical element um, kind of led me more down the path of instrumental guitar players, um, such as Steve I was probably my biggest influence from a guitar player perspective. But when I started to learn about these names, Steve Vai and Joe Satriani and so on and so forth, John Petrucci was uh, kind of spoken of in the same circles as being, you know, a virtuoso and, and in, you know, an absolutely amazing songwriter and, and guitar player. And then when I first probably heard Dream Theatre, that was probably one of my biggest influences because of the uh, the, you know, the breadth of, what they brought to music so they had the technical kind of virtuosity but they also had the musical um side and the the kind of light and shade and just uh, everything about that style and, and obviously it was slightly heavier because my, my background is predominantly heavier stuff than you know i know child is into some of the kind of more more lighter prog should we say but a lot of the stuff i was into was certainly the heavier side of things so you know, Dream Theatre were a massive influence and then kind of um, symphonic rock bands like Symphony X and stuff like that. That kind of, yeah, exactly. Uh, Russell Allen on vocals, Michael Romeo on, on guitars. 
Um, and I, I just kind of attached myself to anything that I could within that vein. Um, so I, I had a really big appreciation for the technical side of it, but I didn't want to kind of lose that musical sense about what works and what doesn't and how songs kind of fit together and and that type of thing. So I, I, I listened to pretty much anything I could, but my like I said, my main influences certainly in my younger days were we kind of dream theatres and that kind of covered all bases for me. You know, as I say, purely from a, you blow your mind just through those kind of technical um, guitar runs and things that John Petrucci uh, used to do. And I, you know, he was certainly my favourite player for a good number of years, but then the, the kind of songwriting backed it up. And that's everything that I try to do, either historically and still now is, kind of I want the song to come first and then everything else to kind of you know fall into place behind that whether that be you know a, a two minute five minute ten minute guitar solo as long as the song kind of warrants it then then that's fine um but yeah I think I think as I say I, I probably bring the the heavier elements to Age of Distraction and a lot of the stuff that I do write I try to ensure that it's at least got something if not heavy, something quite sinister. I, I like the darker edge of of that that type of music, um, and I, you know I like to hope that that does kind of come through. All right. By the way, I, I uh, was remiss if I don't mention the album will be out on the thirty first of May, and uh, just <clears throat> wanted to cover that before we go too much further. Uh, Charlie, do you want to and. Neither of you have mentioned, I, I mean, maybe you guys uh, missed that whole 80s thing, but like uh, Pendragon and oh, no, I, I Stone and yeah. I mean, to me, you no, you don't sound exactly like them, but there is, well, I, I see an influence, but obviously not, not for Jen. How about you, Charlie? I'm I'm probably one who the one who brings more of that, of that into oh, the cool. sound. Um, so I, I grew up listening to you know, Floyd and Genesis, but in my teens, I, I did get hold of uh, Pendragon, for example, uh, and Marillion. Um, but while I, I I've always loved the sort of the, the, the theatrical side of, of of that kind of prog, the symphonic side of it, I did spend a lot of my teens listening to Iron Maiden. Um, yeah. and uh, things like TNT. Uh, Tony Harnell is one of my absolute favourite vocalists ever, 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 ever. Um, an awful lot of power metal. Um, yeah. I don't Amazing. think it's uh, too shameful to admit to that. <laughs> Bit of uh, Sonata Arctica in the morning. Yeah, well, there's not? nothing wrong with that. No, they're all great. <laughs> it's just amazing that you have that kind of, both of you have that kind of background. And then yeah. what comes salvation. Out, comes oh, just, the creation. Oh, yeah. The, you know, one of, one of the yeah, things yeah, that just, go ahead, sorry. We, uh, John and I got talking about you know, the bands that we like, and one one of the ones we bonded over a lot was Pain of Salvation. Um, oh, yeah. We do have quite a lot of overlap. Yeah, um, you know the big yeah, big yeah. area in the middle where we like a lot of the same sort of stuff. Um, as John kind of touched on, I was incredibly busy <laughs> with with other commitments yeah, when yeah. when I was hearing the the uh, the proto Age of Distraction tracks. Um. And I ended up take, uh, taking non-compromised, kind of in spite of myself, thinking, there's no way I've got time to do another project, come on. But it, it was just too exciting yeah, yeah. a chance to explore some of those heavier influences and sounds um, and sing something that had a little more bite, a little, a little bit of venom in it. And I think that <laughs> came through on the uh, <laughs> first vocal that we recorded together. <laughs> well, speaking of... Indeed. Speaking of that venom, yeah, the album kind of explores. So yeah, well, let's talk about the game of whispers. So it explores the world. This is what I read from you guys: uh, the world of toxic, toxic relationships, personal and global miscommunications, and the undercurrent of what we are thinking and strategically planning, without truly discovering what the other side wants, knows, or believes. Um, talk a little bit about that. Because we, you know, unfortunately, we're running out of time on this first part, but um, ten, minute, ten minute warning, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
I always <laughs> write. Oh. So I kind of oh. touched on the sort of the lyrics um, and how they tend for me to come from the music that I'm working with, um, and that that darkness that that John's touched on that 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 he brings into his writing was a, a perfect place to explore those kind of themes. I think um, I'm not solely responsible for the lyrics on this album. Um, John's written uh, a couple of the tracks in, in full, pretty much the lyrics. Um, we've collaborated in other areas and Phil Stuckey also brought some lyrics to the project on the, the song Take Me Down, which he sings yeah. wonderfully. Um, I think in terms of lyrics, we all grasped onto that sort of thematic undercurrent that was present in the music right from the start. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead John. I would, yeah, I would, I would totally agree. I think we we had a kind of theme in mind um, <clears throat> straight off the bat because Charlie Charlie wrote the lyrics um, solely to to compromise with with obviously no. Um, you know, no collaboration uh, with myself, and and to be fair, not not really any steer as to um, what what the subject matter was. He kind of he he went with it, and 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 that became what it was. Uh, but funnily enough, the kind of the um, the theme of the album was kind of already wanting to go down that that particular route anyway. So it it all worked really well. Um, you know when Phil, me and Phil were discussing, because Phil wrote the lyrics for Take Me Down, but we discussed kind of a theme and um, I'd just give him a general overview as to, you know, about what the song was was to be about. And he he went away and, and worked his magic. And I think the rest of it fell into place really, really, really easy because we were all pulling in the, in the same direction for the same kind of, for the same goal, really. And... Um, I think like Charlie says, I think the music, certainly once once we'd got it across to Dom and he'd, you know, kind of edited it and and worked some magic, it it Charlie uses the, the right term there and that it inspires you to to kind of of what to write because it it has a fee it has, you know, it, it, it almost it has a feeling does does the music and it, it's that undercurrent and it's consistent throughout the album and you know I don't it, initially, I wouldn't even say that that was something that was intentional. I think, and that was the beauty of the project, it, how it kind of retains its consistency from the first note to the last with with such ease. Um, and, and that's how I knew very early on with the musicians that I was working with that, you know, as much as those choices were kind of, it's not like I went out there and, and auditioned a hundred singers, you know, literally come off the back of a conversation. The same with Mark, but it all, you know, it all just worked, and and that that seamless kind of connection um, has really helped us from from cradle to grave on from each song, you know, on, on to you know actually pulling together the the art. We we just all knew, kind of. Um, what we wanted from it and and how we hoped it'd turn out and and it it come with relative ease which doesn't often happen so um yeah it's it's super exciting and you know I can't wait for for everybody to hear it um it, it's you know and I've I've heard it obviously a number of times and it you know I can still just on my way to work you know put it on and never gets never gets old it's every every listen is as fresh as the last and i hope that you know everyone who's bought it so far and everyone who, who does buy it in the future um you know can can have that same kind of listening experience because that's what it's all about and I've, you know i've said this before but ultimately the 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 moment that this this come together and it was just all about getting the music out there and, and hopefully you know if one person you know, listen to it and says that's amazing. Then that that'll be that's enough for me. You know, if a hundred people do or a million, it, it's you know. It's, well, I'll uh, tell you one one person that has it on every morning is usually me <laughs> in the car. So it's a, it's an excellent. Oh, it's a good car album. <laughs> yeah, it's an excellent car album on the way to work. Uh, yeah, but yeah, definitely. Just real quick, because you did mention the artist, and that cover is just. Um, I've talked about this before. I'm not going to go into it all in depth, but the album cover can just 
pull you in in this one. Absolutely. You got you picked the right person for this one. That, that is awesome. Where, yeah. Where did yeah. You Go ahead. We originally thought I might do the cover. I do do some uh, cover artwork from time to time, but I, I was drawing a blank with this one. It, it happens sometimes, and I said, I don't think I can do this one. Let's uh, let's cast the net wider. So John did. I did. It was just one of those. Um, I mean, I'm not going to promote the, the site, but there's one. There's a particular site that uh, kind of freelancers um, go on, and I've used it before for a couple of other projects, non-musically related. And I've used it through work as well. So I just thought, you know what, we'll we'll kind of test the waters and see um, what 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 take up we can get on it. And you know, I had a really really big response uh, for people wanting to to do the design, but um very much like everything else with with this project and with the album the moment that i saw some of the album covers that the artist had done previously was the mo Im immediately the moment i knew that she would she would deliver exactly what we wanted um it was you know and i i must have looked through probably 25 portfolios within the space of about an hour and i got i got to uh, hers and that was it just accepted, said, yep, you're doing it. It's as simple as that. And, you know, it, it was, it was, it was really, it was like it was meant to be. And I knew that, that she would deliver just based on previous work. And, and the moment that we got, we got a number of ideas through and yeah, obviously this one was the, uh, was the winner, but there, there were a number of, you know, absolutely yep. amazing um, you know, uh, options for us to to use. It's really a shame that uh, some of the younger generations don't appreciate these as much as we do, but uh, as much as I did. I mean, I grew up with that kind of thing. And uh, more, I mean, no, the music in itself is what you want to take away and listen to. But that cover is just absolutely astounding. And I've I've already ordered the CD and when I do, it'll be up here with the rest of them it is it's an awesome cover thank you so much um thank you very we're much down, we're down to about a minute um is there anything quick you want to say uh, poor charlie hasn't had a chance to talk i've been talking over but do you do you want to mention anything about say, that or the cover go ahead it's yeah it's really important i think when you're putting an album out that you're happy with the whole package it can't 